there be, and it was done. Let there be light. Let there be stars. Let there be sea creatures. Let there be dry ground. Let there be animals. After he's spoken into existence, he said, it is good. What he said, he gave it purpose. It is good because he is good. But when it came to man, he didn't speak us into existence. He actually took time and formed us. We was God's first touch. Now there's a reason why we call him a father. A father carries the seed, a father also produces and he sustains. The love of the father is actually to support his creation. Eve, the mother of all living, happened to have a conversation with someone. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course, we may eat from the trees in the garden. The woman replied, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. Now, I would like to ask you all three simple questions. Question number one, how did she know what God said? Question number two, why would the serpent be talking to Eve? And question number three, why did Eve tell the serpent we must not touch concerning the fruit of the tree? Now, if you would like to just pause this video for a second and just think about the questions that I gave you. nor could he go up to his image. But he actually went after something that belonged to man. He went after the woman so he could actually get through to man. That is how he worked in the garden. Again, Eve came from Adam. Women came from man. His wife came from him. And out from his womb, from his side, that is where she belonged to, next to him. So if the enemy could corrupt something that belongs to you, once it returns back to its place as in whole, the entire being, the entire system will be corrupt. And to be honest, she had no business getting close to something that didn't belong to her. Eve was smart. She knew the word, but she created an open access for the enemy to come in, not knowing that he was just an enemy. She didn't know that she was innocent at the time. And many of us can't really blame our first parents because we would do the same, and actually we have done it. When someone, even as a child, we just did what we wanted to do. We felt that it was right. We were probably led by emotions, our feelings, and then we messed up something. But you know, God is gracious. What happened with Adam is that it actually started a generational curse. And that generational curse is now passed down even through men, through women, through everybody, every family, every child, every person. But the first Adam kind of messed that up for us, but the last Adam restored it. And besides the generational curse, now we have a generational blessing. You see, it started with the tree and it ended with the tree.
maybe Adam knew how she is. Especially knowing that she came from him. See, it was God that gave Adam the command to not eat of the fruit of the tree. But Adam told her, don't eat nor touch of it. God never told Adam to not touch and eat it. He just told her, he just told Adam not to eat it. But Adam told his wife, don't eat it nor touch it. When God first created man, see Adam had the strength, power, stamina, endurance. He also had nurturing, embracing, caring, and adoring. He had the same characteristics as God. But we know that naturally women are drawn to touch, drawn to intimacy, and also drawn to beauty. The enemy knew this, and he actually took advantage of Eve. Now let's go back to the story. Now after Eve saw that the fruit of the tree was good and pleasing to the eyes, when God made his wife God actually shift the soft side, the embracing side, the nurturing side, the caring side, the characteristics and attributes out of man and formed a woman. Generally, women are soft, caring, embracing, loving, compassionate. And God actually knew that this was needed to happen. Like I said, he had the foreknowledge, the forewisdom and all of these things. When God created woman, it actually matched up with Adam. Therefore, they became whole. Originally, it was all whole in one. Now they're a whole again. And that's why two becomes one. So we have the masculine side and then we have the feminine side. This is where we get the word.